Hello, everyone. Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools with us today. My name is Sarah and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, SUNY New Paul. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, my name is Abigail, and I'm a freshman admission advisor at SUNY New Paltz. Uh, SUNY just stands for State University of New York, so we are located in New York State um, in uh, the Hudson Valley area in New Paltz, New York. Uh, and we are so proud of our location uh, in New Paltz because it gives our students a lot of opportunities. So uh, it gives students opportunities to, not only for fun, but Fun things to do in the area, apple picking, pumpkin picking, uh, you know, um, going to the Schwangung Mountains to go for a hike, which are only 15 minutes away, or going into the three larger cities that surround us, Kingston, Poughkeepsie, and Newburgh, that are also about 20 to 25 minutes away. Uh, and what's really great about uh, us is our area, uh, not only for fun things to do, but also for internship opportunities. We are an hour and a half north of New York City, uh, an hour and 20 minutes south of the capital of Albany. Uh, and like I said, we are close to those three larger cities, Kingston, Poughkeepsie, and Newburgh. So this is really great for internship opportunities uh, for students to really network and build up their resume while they're here. Uh, another really wonderful thing about SUNY New Paltz is how many programs we have. Uh, so we have over 100 majors and 50 50 minors for our students to choose from. So we have a little bit of something for everyone. We have a School of Business, a College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, uh, a uh, School of Education, or I'm sorry, a College of Education, uh, a uh, College of Science and Engineering, uh, and also our School of Fine and Performing Arts. So we have uh, a lot of options uh, for just about everyone uh, and what they want to study at New Paltz. They're not only, you know, getting a degree, but they're receiving an education. They're able to um, study and, and major in a couple of other th different things. So major in something and minor in something totally different. Uh, we really try to not limit our students in that way. Uh, and at New Paltz, we are a, a medium-sized institution. So we have about 6,800 undergraduate students. Uh, and our student-to-faculty ratio is uh, 16 to 1. So uh, you're really getting to know your professors. They're getting to know you. Uh, and you're able to have uh, those really great connections with your professors as well as with your peers, because really rarely will you be in one of those big lecture-style halls. Um, another thing that's really wonderful about our uh, about New Paltz and about our school, in addition to our academic programs, uh, we also have a huge uh, study abroad opportunity. So um, since we are part of the SUNY system, there are over a thousand study abroad programs for our students to choose from. Uh, we have programs on six out of the seven continents. We have programs for all of our majors, uh, as well as internship opportunities, research opportunities abroad, uh, and volunteering abroad as well. We offer scholarships and financial aid for studying abroad, so uh, it's really doable for our students and we encourage them to uh, participate in that studying abroad uh, opportunity. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, we also have over 200 clubs and organizations for our students to get involved in as well. So uh, we have clubs for all of our majors, clubs for sports. We are a division three school um, and we have uh, several different options for varsity sports, but we also offer club and intramural sports as well. Um, we also have clubs for just fun things to do, of course, outside of the classroom, just to um, you know do something with your friends uh, and to, um, uh, and to kind of learn something new. So we have a lot of options and opportunities for our students to get involved uh, outside of the classroom as well. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, I do want to talk about uh, the admissions process with you. Uh, so what makes a freshman uh, 
application complete. Uh, we require first and foremost the Common App or the SUNY app, no preference. However, New Jersey students usually favor the Common App. If you'd like to submit the SUNY, that's okay. Uh, we'll look at your high school transcript. We're looking at the high school transcript. We look to see that you have completed four years of English, four years of social studies, three to four years of a science with a lab. The lab component is required, two to four years of a language other than English, and three to four years of math. Uh, and I know for many New Jersey students, you have to complete Algebra 2 Trig uh, in order to graduate high school, um, but we do require that Algebra 2 Trigonometry requirement for our, our uh, STEM courses, or our STEM majors, I should say, excuse me. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. The average of our accepted students have um, a 3.5 GPA uh, or higher. Um, however, that is not a set number. We, um, you know, take a little bit higher than that 3.5, of course, but we will also take a little bit lower than the 3.5 as well. So if you are uh, in 3.0 or, or higher, you're still in pretty good standing for us. Just keep in mind that the average of our accepted students have a 3.5 or higher. We require at least one letter of recommendation from a teacher or guidance counselor, uh, and we also require an essay. Uh, we are test optional for students applying for fall of 2022. However, students applying for fall of 2023, uh, we're not too sure yet. Um, we do have a deadline coming up for early action. It is November 15th. Uh, we also have um, general admission deadline all the way until May 1st. So we have uh, a lot of time for students to complete that application uh, and send that into SUNY New Paltz. Uh, and I'm just going to skip over this transfer because we have limited time today uh, just to talk about tuition and fees. So for a non-New York State resident, uh, your, the yearly cost estimate is going to be about 32500 So we are pretty on par uh, with New Jersey students or with uh, New Jersey in-state schools. Uh, so for our out-of-state tuition. So definitely keep that in mind. And also, we, of course, recommend you come uh, and check us out in person. Uh, we have in-person tours. We also have virtual tours and I'll post some more links in the chat. So thank you so much for learning a little bit more about New Paltz today. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Hofstra University. All right, thank you so much. Just gonna go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining tonight. So my name is Christy Niemeyer. I am one of the assistant deans of admission at Hofstra. Um, I actually work with students from Western New York, Pennsylvania and Northern California. So I am indeed helping out one of my colleagues, Chris, who is your direct admission counselor for New Jersey. I'll be sure to put his information in the chat, but you are welcome to reach out to either one of us should you have questions after tonight. So a little bit about Hofstra, we are of course located in New York State, more specifically we are on Long Island, so we are right in the heart of the suburbs of Nassau County, so there's plenty to do nearby campus, as you can see a little bit of everything between going to the mall, the beach, the park, if you need to make a target run, a run to stop and shop, whatever you need is within about 10 to 15 minutes of campus, we do of course have a shuttle that can take you to all these places, or you are welcome to bring your car to campus and it is included in tuition for all all four years that you're a student, which is awesome. We do love to say that we have the best of both worlds at Hofstra. So you get that typical college campus experience, as you can see in that picture. Pretty typical day for us at Hofstra. That is one of our quads on campus. So it is a beautiful campus. We are actually a recognized arboretum, but we are also very close to New York City, about a 45 minute train ride away. So really convenient for our students to go do internships in the city, get that whole city life experience, do sightseeing, all the typical touristy things. And then we do, of course, have trips into the city that our school will sponsor, going to food tours, Broadway shows, sporting events, whatever you could think of. So I always recommend taking advantage of that. So we are a mid-sized school. We're about 6,120 undergraduate students. Our students really love when you set foot on campus, you feel like you are at a bigger school because campus is a little over 240 acres. So there is plenty of space for all of our students, but you do have a smaller tight-knit community, um, which is really great. You're not surrounded by tens of thousands of other students on our campus. Our average class size is 21. Student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. So you have a lot of personal interaction in the classroom. Your professor knows who you are. You're never 
just a seat number. And all of our lecture halls are primarily used for guest speakers or for workshops. So you are never in a 100 or 200 percent lecture hall for your courses. We do offer about 165 different programs, so a little bit of everything. We are a liberal arts school, so we do have some general education classes our students are required to take. You can see here on the screen all of our different majors. I highly recommend going to our website to see a little bit of everything. There are only four programs that that requires special admission. Otherwise, if you are accepted to Hofstra, you're accepted into all of these programs. And a lot of our students do usually decide to double major or add a minor alongside of their major. So being a Hofstra student is also being a big student leader on campus. So we have over 220 clubs and organizations you can join. Anything you can think of, if we don't have it, you can create it between fraternities and sororities, academic groups, acapella groups, dance groups. We have a Quidditch team. We have a coloring club. Our students also do a lot of community service. They spend about 100,000 hours giving back to the community, whether that's in the local area, going into the city, or also hosting big events on campus like St. Baldrick's Day or Relay for Life. We are also also a division one school for athletics. So we have 21 NCAA division one teams, both men and women's um, really proud of our women's soccer right now. They're actually 10th in the nation. They are doing awesome. And then basketball is a really big thing for us in the winter. You can see in that picture is actually our Mac arena. So we have events called pack the Mac where our students and administrators go and pack out the arena as much as they can to support our teams, which is awesome. We do guarantee four years of on-campus housing. We have 35 different residence halls, so plenty of space for everyone, which is why we can always guarantee a room for every student for all four years. So those internships opportunities, like I had mentioned a little bit, you can go into New York City or stay on Long Island. It is up to you. There are opportunities in both locations. Most students usually have one to two internships by the time they graduate, but you can see we work with a lot of really cool organizations that are on that list. Um, you would have any opportunity to work with any of those as well as plenty more that is not the end all be all list, but you will have a career center advisor that will kind of help get you there and apply to all those internships and make those connections. Scholarships, keep in mind, we of course are a four-year private school within New York, um, but that does give us some flexibility with scholarship offers. So you could see majority of our students, almost all of them have some type of scholarship or financial aid or both combined. So we do recommend filing a FAFSA to see if you qualify for any financial aid, but of course, all of your merit scholarships, you're automatically considered when you submit your application. So we try and go out with our highest offer as much as we can give you right off the bat when you submit your application to us. So those deadlines, keep in mind, we run the same three every year. So early action is coming up. If you apply for either early action deadline, it is non-binding. You are not locked in. If you are accepted to Hofstra during that time, you still have until May 1st to make your final decision like everybody else. And you can absolutely use Common App, which I highly recommend. We are a test optional school. It's completely up to you if you wish to submit your test scores. But if you did really well on the exam, super proud of your scores, I highly recommend adding them to your application. But feel free to reach out to our office if you do have any questions and if you're not sure what direction you should go. Some things I recommend doing, check out our virtual tour. You could do that at your own pace. Our visit opportunities, we're open for in-person tours every day of the week. Come and visit us. We do, of course, have virtual options as well. And of course, all of our social media, definitely follow us, especially on Instagram. We do a lot of student takeovers throughout the week and all of our fall events are really happening this time of year. And last, this is my contact information. I will also um, add Chris's information in the chat as well. Should you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either one of us. But it was great to have you join us tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have the Cooper Union. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me just share the screen real quick, and then we'll get started. And there we go. We're good to go. We go. Uh, all right. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm an admissions representative from the Cooper Union. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the Cooper Union is a school with a rich history and a vision focused on inclusion and access. For example, our women's right to vote started at our great hall over here. Uh, one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest advantages to Cooper Union is that we are a small school, but we are going to be within the framework of New York City, specifically the East Village. So there's a lot going on there. Um, our campus has three buildings, only three buildings, but there are a lot going on in these buildings. Um, and uh, at CU, we believe in experiential learning that crosses the boundaries of our three schools. 
We have under 1,000 undergraduate students. This means small class sizes and lots of personal interactions with professors. For example, uh, we have an eight to one student ratio uh, to professor ratio, so you get a lot of attention from our professors. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, uh, we have three schools centered around design, creation, building, and innovation at Cooper. Uh, the first one is our Irwin S. Channon School of Architecture. This is where you will earn a five-year NAAB accredited Bachelor of Architecture degree. This is the degree you need in order to become an architect. Students from all five years work side by side in a giant open studio. Uh, this is where they work together on drawing, model making, and design development along with digital tech. Uh, for architecture, we offer a studio-based curriculum and rigorous critique and debate. Uh, next, that brings us to our School of Art. We offer four, a four-year fine arts degree. Uh, there are no majors in our art school. It is a holistic artistic working environment and which uh, uh, spans multiple disciplines. For first year, you will work on general coursework such as drawing, painting, printmaking, photography, film video, and graphic design. This provides our students with different perspectives and experimentations across multiple disciplines. And if you come to Cooper for the art school from your sophomore year and beyond, you will be given your own dedicated work studio space for the time that you are at Cooper. Uh, and lastly, that brings us to our third school, the Albert Nurkin School of Engineering. Students that go to this school have the choice of uh, earning uh, degrees in five areas, civil, chemical, electrical, mechanical, and general engineering. Students from our engineering uh, uh, school uh, engage in challenging and rewarding hands-on project-based learning experience. Uh, for your first year as in, in the engineering school, you will be studying design and problem solving. This is where you will work on projects that we think are important to society, such as reimagining waste, designing rain gardens in the city, automated robots, and refugee in-flight shelter kits. Our highest performing students in the engineering uh, program go to pursue the integrated master's and bachelor's program. This allows people to attain both degrees in just four years. And also, if you are in the engineering school, you have the choice of minoring in bioengineering, math, computer science, and humanities. Uh, we here at Cooper are very proud of our labs and facilities. We have almost countless labs and facilities. Uh, a recent addition, for example, that we're very proud of is our art, architecture, construction, and engineering lab. This is where we have state-of-the-art technology that allows students from all three schools to work and learn together. Some of the equipment that we have that you're gonna to love to use if you come here are 3D printers, water jet cutters, CNC routers, embroidery machines, as long as uh, many others. Uh, we also have something special called the VIB program. This is an interdisciplinary venture where you will work with students on projects centered around a common theme, such as designing a smart city. Uh, student life, we're very uh, proud of our student life here at Cooper. Uh, uh, we have over 80 clubs and they're uh, based around what the students are passionate about. Also for the engineering department, we have lots of competitive clubs such as Formula SAE Racing, Chemi Car and Steel Bridge. Uh, as far as housing goes, we offer housing uh, to uh, all of our students freshman year. Our housing is located two minutes from the campus buildings and it is in the center of the East Village in Manhattan, New York City. It is amazing there. We have tons of great food fellow students from other schools. There's lots of cross-pollination there. It's a very great, exciting place to learn, uh, but uh, housing is not mandatory at Cooper. So if you choose to live at home or somewhere else, you can. Uh, of course, we have an Office of Career Development that offers great opportunities to the students at Cooper. Most students participate in a two-year uh, internship, many of which are paid. And of course, before you leave Cooper, uh, you will get personalized assistance in finding your next step, mostly employment. Uh, okay, as far as financial aid goes, uh, every admitted student is automatically awarded a half tuition scholarship valued at $22,275. And this is for every year you attend Cooper. Uh, seniors should apply for FAFSA as early as October 1st. And of course, exceptional candidates are automatically considered for additional merit-based uh, uh, awards. And of course, if you qualify, we have a work-study program that you can also earn a little bit of extra money on. Uh, of course, at Cooper, uh, we work with students to try and make sure that they are not deterred from attending the school for financial reasons. The average cost of attendance for uh, incoming class of last year was $14,111. Uh, this number is why Cooper is consistently ranked as one of the best valued schools in the country. Uh, as far as application requirements, we use the Common App and we have both early and regular decisions. Our deadlines are listed here and we will be test optional for this year. And at this point, I'd like to point you to a virtual information session that we host once a month. Uh, information is on our website at www.cooper.edu apply. 
And uh, that is it. Thank you so much for attending this session. If you have any additional questions, please email us, email us at admissions at cooper.edu. Thank you. Thank you so much. So at this stage, I'd like to invite all of our um, presenters to join you back on camera. Uh, we have a couple questions I'd like to pose to them and get their insights and their expertise. Uh, so the first one, and we'll start uh, with SUNY New Paltz. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, I think the best advice I could give someone um, is to, um, if you can, go to the campus and, and check it out, um, just to kind of see if it's a place uh, that best fits you and your interests and your personality and, and kind of it, when you're on campus, try to picture yourself there. Um, if you can't make it to the campus for whatever reason, um, definitely check out what they have for uh, virtual events, whether it's a virtual tour or if the school's offering like a panel for their students to, you know, ask questions for students, prospective students to ask questions to their current students, uh, any sort of event like that. Um, I think that's my best advice. <laughs> Hofstra University. So I would say my biggest piece of advice is to keep all of your options open because um, college is a really exciting time and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. There are so many awesome schools that you can check out and just give it a shot and apply to them. It doesn't hurt. See what happens. Um, and then, you know, go through the whole process, visit the school, talk to students, um, get the whole feel for the school. Um, but for most people, hopefully the four year undergrad experience only happens once. So definitely um, take advantage of it and try something new. The Cooper Union. Uh, yes, uh, a piece of advice I would have is, uh, I know it's hard to travel these days, but if you can go to the school and see where it is, if you wanna be living there, if you think you can uh, go, uh, go to school there, you think you'd be happy there, you think you'd thrive there. And also talk to the students uh, and see what their life is like in the area that they're in, what their education has been like. And uh, talking to them is going to give you the best idea whether or not you wanna to go to the school. So our next question is, uh, if I don't know, there we go. Um, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? And we'll start again with uh, SUNY New Paltz. Um, I think for us, um, just to remember our location, um, we are we have so, we are so proud of our location. Like I talked about in my presentation, you know, we have so much to offer our students, uh, not only on our campus but then uh, outside of our campus. So I think, uh, you know, that we're located in the Hudson Valley in New York State uh, is really wonderful for our students. It's a great resource. So definitely something to keep in mind. Hofstra. I would say um, to remember that Hofstra is such a supportive and exciting environment. Um, every student on our campus just wants everyone to thrive um, and all the administration are so supportive for all of our students. So it's really just a place where you can excel in whatever you want to do, um, all different kinds of programs, activities, and really just get the best four year college experience that you can. The Cooper Union. Uh, something that you should remember about our school is that we have under 1,000 undergraduate students. So it is an eight to one student ratio. So that is a lot of personal uh, attention you're going to get from the professors that not a lot of schools can offer. And also, even though you're in a small school, you're in New York City. So there's a million things to do at any point there in that city. So, uh, yeah. And our last question, um, and we'll start with the Cooper Union this time. What is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Uh, that uh, people think that uh, uh, the admissions, uh, at least at Cooper, uh, rely almost completely on GPAs and tests, and it is a very holistic view, and uh, that we look uh, at a, we try and see the whole person and their personnel and everything. So uh, don't be too freaked out about test scores and uh, make sure that we know you in the application. And Hofstra University. Um, I would say one myth is that you need to have perfect grades. Um, I think that's something that every student is always worried about is their transcripts and their GPA and making sure that their grades 
are perfect in the admission process and that's the only way they can get accepted. And there is so much more than that, um, especially the holistic review process, which Hofstra definitely has. Um, there's so much more to a student than just your grades. If we see that you're trying and really pushing yourself, if you had a bad freshman year, it happens to everyone. Um, and if you can just show growth and um, you know go up from there, that's really what matters. Goonie New Paltz. Um, I agree with both my colleagues on this call, but I'll try to just kind of throw in something else to uh, say. Uh, and I think that a big myth is that there's one type of student at, at a certain institution. Like I get that question a lot, like what type of student is at your school? Um, there are all different types of students, all different types of people, uh, you know, and there are so many different students that have a similar interest, but they themselves, uh, you know, might come from different backgrounds or, or have different experiences. Um, so there's not only just one type of person that goes to a certain school. Well, I want to thank our wonderful presenters tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. As a reminder, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. Thank you so much and have a great rest of the night.